The Legend of Zelda series often has whimsical and lighthearted elements to it, but that certainly hasn't prevented Link from having some pretty bad <laughs> moments. Today, I bring to you Link's top 20 coolest moments in the entire franchise, and yes, that includes non-canon material as well, so if you're concerned about spoilers, you probably shouldn't be watching this video, but to be fair, most of these games have been out for quite some time. Also keep in mind that these rankings are totally based on facts, absolutely no opinion attached. So let's get started! I'm your host Andy, and welcome to Zelda. In Majora's Mask, Captain Kida is the undead leader of the armies of the Iconic Kingdom. Link must battle Kida, and after Link succeeds, Kida tells him, Since being shamed by loss in a battle within my kingdom, I have waited here for one to come and awaken my soul. Young swordsman who has awakened and deftly defeated me, I shall rely on your power to fulfill my request. I ask you to take my soul, which rests in a fiercely burning flame, convey my words to my men, who, even in death, remain loyal to me. Tell them the war has ended. Then I shall be able to drift quietly into sleep. Captain, sir, may I take leave, sir? After an awkward pause, young Link gives Kida a salute to dismiss him. I'm not quite sure what it is about this scene, but I guess it's just a combination of Link being a kid, gaining the respect of an army captain, and that salute that just makes this moment pretty cool. Yes, when I said I'll be including non-canon sources, that includes the animated series. In the beginning of episode 5, the king catches Link trying to use a rope to swing into Zelda's room. When the king asks Link what he's doing, Link has the balls to say he's going to swing through Zelda's window to try to kiss her. Gotta admit, not many guys have the guts to say that like that to a girl's father. Majora's Mask is a bizarre game on its own, and becomes even more so at the end of the game, when Majora and Link enter the moon. If Link completes four trials and trades all of his masks to the Moon Children, he will be given the Fierce Deity Mask, which transforms young Link into a god, and allows him to defeat each phase of Majora with only a couple of hits, while holding the super cool double helix sword. The final boss of Spirit Tracks is Maladus, a demon who takes on a boar-like form similar to Ganon's. In the final phase, Link and Zelda work together to take down this beast. Link has to distract Maladus by attacking him head-on, though it's futile, while well, Zelda sneaks around to shoot him in the back with the Bow of Light. This is a rather cool moment for Link, since he's essentially shark bait, while well, Zelda lines up her shot. If that's not cool enough for you, Link eventually kills Maladus by shoving a sword straight into his skull, which I'd say is pretty dope. Skyward Sword is the first game in the Zelda timeline. After sealing Demise, Hylia split the Triforce and hid the pieces away in Skykeep for her chosen hero, Link, to eventually collect and use to defeat Demise for good. And of course, near the end of the game, he does, making the Hero of the Sky the first being to ever use the power of the full Triforce. The Bottom of the Well and Shadow Temple in Ocarina of Time have among the darkest ambience in the entire franchise, and house terrifying monsters known as Dead Hands pale and bloody blobs of flesh with several arms and hands coming out of the ground, which grab Link as the main body slithers over to him, opens its jaws unnaturally wide to bite Link's head. This is more of a terrifying moment than an epic one, but if we think about it, a 9 or 10 year old Link taking down one of these things is pretty bad at This is perhaps one of the coolest boss fights out of the 2D games. Link encounters the Yorg pair once reaching the peak of the Palace of Winds. The fight occurs up high in the skies, and Link has to defeat both Georgs while riding them. The moment just feels epic, especially for a 2D game. The visual effects are very well executed, which makes Link taking down these sky beasts even more impressive. At the back of the Hyrule Historia, there is a manga written to celebrate Skyward Sword. This story is a non-canon telling of the war on the surface as Hylia was at war with Demise, long before the events of Skyward Sword unfolded. In this story, Link was a warrior who was imprisoned, but when the people were desperate due to the threat of demise, they called upon Link, who for some reason agreed to help with the fight despite their cruelty to him. At one point, Hylia descends looking for the one to aid her in her war. Her Loftwing, which in the manga looks far more intimidating than the versions in the game, tells Hylia that it's useless to look among these humans. 
When Link hears this, he yells, Useless. If you seek souls to fight alongside you, we are here, Loftwing. We will defeat the Demon King. The next panel shows a close-up of Hylia's face, which looks intrigued and interesting to Link. There's so much more to this story, but at this point, Link was not chosen as Hylia's hero. He was able to gain the trust of a god, which is definitely not something to be overlooked. As Link, Zelda, and the Champions are fighting Calamity Ganon in Age of Calamity, a tremor suddenly causes part of the castle to crumble, and a large boulder begins to fall and crush Zelda, but of course, Link jumps in to save the day. For like, the tenth time. But he doesn't just tackle her out of the way, which would probably be the most realistic way to do so. He apparently parries the massive stone with just one arm. After Link uses the full Triforce to eradicate Demise and Skyward Sword, it appears as if it will be a happy ending. However, Link is suddenly struck by Gearham from behind, who captures Zelda and takes her through the Gate of Time to resurrect Demise in the past. Of course, Link recovers and chases after him and finds Gearham at the bottom of the sealed grounds performing a ritual for the resurrection. When he spots Link on the high ground, he blocks the path preventing him from gliding down and summons a horde of enemies to stall Link. As the horde of Bacoblins and Moblins charge at Link, he still remains staring at Skrull Zelda, and the moment the monsters reach him, Link turns and gives them his angry face with his sword drawn. This incarnation of Link is often very goofy and seems very lighthearted, but he also knows how to show who's boss. If you're enjoying this video so far, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more videos about Zelda lore and analysis. If you'd like to support my content as well as gaining some channel perks, please consider signing up for my YouTube memberships. Some examples of these perks are getting your name shown at the end of each of my videos, voting on a video topic every two months, and even a monthly game night with me and some of the other members. If interested, click that join button on the channel's homepage or the link in the description for more information. A Link Between Worlds may be a spiritual sequel to A Link to the Past, but their storylines are slightly different. Princess Hilda of Lowrill pretended to be innocent when in reality she was conspiring with Yuga to steal Hyrule's Triforce. She ends up taking Zelda's Triforce of Wisdom, and then Yuga then fuses himself with Ganon to gain control of the Triforce of Power. However, Yuga betrays Hilda by sealing her into a painting like he did with Zelda, and steals the Triforce of Wisdom from her. Now Link stands against Yuga Ganon, who now holds two pieces of the Triforce, making him immensely powerful. Yuga exclaims how he will squash Link and take his Triforce of Courage to take his rightful spot among the gods, and flexes his two pieces of the Triforce. Link just stands there and flexes his Triforce of Courage while holding the Master Sword. Standing up to this wizard Bor Amalgam, which has the power of two gods, definitely earns this Link a spot on the list. Yes, another non-canon Link moment. This short cutscene comes from an animated short actually made to highlight Palutena as a playable character in Smash 4. The animation begins with Palutena watching Link and Pit fight, and notes that this fighter from Hyrule is quite impressive. Then there's about a minute of Link just destroying Pit, and Palutena finally has to come to Pit's aid. Even though Palutena is a goddess herself, Link takes a bold step forward, and the scene ends with a loud thud as Link takes this step. We know Link is a good fighter, but moments like this where they just have Link demolish other protagonists from other Nintendo franchises just show Link's epic strength. Twilight Princess has so many amazing cinematic moments, I can make a list of this game alone, but one specific scene where Link shines is his final duel with Ganondorf. Of course, he's the final boss and has four phases. In the final phase, Link and Zelda have just shot Ganondorf off his horse, and Link must duel him. There's many instances where the two clash their swords together and basically have to do that shoving thing like they do in lightsaber duels. After pushing him off, Link delivers successive strikes knocking Ganondorf onto his back, and Link doesn't hesitate to jump up and plunge the Master Sword straight into his chest. And Link definitely looked cool while doing it. What? How is killing Ganondorf more badass in Wind Waker than in Twilight Princess? It's a cartoon! Because this. This is why. I rest my case. For the first three dungeons of Skyward Sword, Link's sole mission is to find Zelda. After completing the Earth Temple, the second dungeon in the game, Link finds Zelda with Impa completing some sacred ritual. Link smiles when he sees her, and at first Zelda tries to run to Link, but Impa reminds her of her critical duty, and tells Zelda she cannot go to Link yet. After Impa ushers Zelda through a portal, Impa scolds Link by telling him that he was too late, and she fears Hylia may be mistaken with her choice of agents. One of the brutal lines she concludes with is if he wishes to be of help to her grace, he must summon a shred of courage. 
These words clearly hurt Link, and at this point, saving Zelda is his main mission. However, Link doesn't just take this. Once Link catches up again with Zelda and Impa at the Temple of Time, Kirihim ambushes them and attempts to abduct Zelda. Of course, Impa uses her magic and combat skills to fend off Girahim to allow Zelda to give Link the Goddess Harp and escape. However, Impa is overwhelmed. Right as Girahim is about to make his move with Impa defeated, Link attacks from behind and forces Girahim to retreat. At this moment, the player can choose to have Link tell Impa a very passive-aggressive line, Am I late? to basically rub in her face that he isn't as useless as Impa accused him of. We rarely ever get to know what Link says, and this line is very feisty, so this definitely deserves a spot on this list. As the Calamity wreaks catastrophe across the land of Hyrule, leading to the downfall of the kingdom and deaths of countless people including the champions and the king, Link and Zelda are cut off from their escape at Fort Hateno by a number of guardian stalkers. Link tries to keep fighting to protect Zelda, but eventually succumbs to his wounds and falls to his knees, unable to keep standing. Sure it's cool Link is a great fighter in Breath of the Wild, but he is in most of the game so why does this make the top 5 you may be asking? Because he's sacrificing his own life for Zelda. When we think of someone being a badass, laying down your life for someone isn't usually what comes to mind first, but it should totally count, kinda like how we respect the military. It takes guts and a huge heart to lay down your life like that in defense of someone else, so I think this link definitely deserves a spot in the top 5. Let's keep in mind that Skyward Sword Link is the first canonical hero in the timeline, which makes his stand against Demise even more impressive. It's confirmed that Link is the first human who has ever stood up to Demise. Link's boldness doesn't just surprise Demise, it amuses him. What's cool here is that Demise actually honors Link to a degree by preparing a separate place for them to duel and granting him some time to decide whether or not he'd actually like to fight. In the boss fight, the music and visual effects are so well executed, it's easy to feel the intensity as if you're actually fighting a god. In the second phase of the battle, Link and Demise use their Skyward Strikes to call down lightning and throw it at each other. What makes Link's killing blow on Demise even cooler than Twilight Princess and Wind Waker is as Link is doing his flip to land his finishing blow, he quickly summons lightning into the Master Sword and plows it straight into Demise's chest. Perhaps my explanation may not give these scenes their justice, but those who have completed Skyward Sword know how cool it is to be Link. As Link, Zelda, and Impa are defending Fort Hateno in Age of Calamity, they are cut off by Astor who then resurrects the four Blight Ganons. Thunder Blight Ganon is the first to awaken and attack. Link fends it off as Impa grabs Zelda and tries to drag her to safety. As they're running, the other three Blight Ganons begin to attack Link, but he doesn't back down. Link manages to dodge all of their attacks from the monsters by jumping on top of each other and swiftly landing his own counterattacks. Even though he does become overwhelmed by the forces until Zelda awakens her powers, it's amazing to see him fight off four of Breath of the Wild's main bosses simultaneously and not even take a single hit. My fellow Twilight Princess fans definitely saw this one coming. It begins with the Ordon children hanging out in Kakariko Village, when suddenly King Boblin comes barreling through on his Bulbo. Colin and Beth are hanging out in the street, and as they see him charging in their direction, Beth freezes and Colin shoves her out of the way. Somehow he doesn't get trampled, but ends up getting snatched up by King Boblin. Right as this happens, he turns back and sees Link riding Epona chasing after him. Colin is held up to taunt Link, and is led to Western Hyrule Field, where Link is ambushed by Boblin Calvary. Despite the attack, Link manages to defeat King Boblin on horseback, causing him to flee to the Bridge of Elden. Of course, Link continues to pursue him to save Colin, but once again, it's a trap. Link then has to joust against this hulking creature riding a huge hog, while Link himself only has Epona and his sword. Despite the odds, Link comes out victorious, knocking King Boblin off the bridge. The finale to this is just flawless. Epona standing on her hind legs over the edge of the bridge, Link holding his sword skyward, and the music. Link just can't get cooler than this. Well, actually... Finally, we have the fight scene between Link and Rivali from Age of Calamity. After defeating Rivali in the gameplay, the fight continues in this cutscene. Link kicks Rivali into a barricade, but he quickly recovers and strategically uses timed bomb arrows to blast Link's shield away and overwhelm him. Then he uses a smokescreen, yet Link notices Rivali's attack, but it's just a hair too late. Rivali glides right above Link's head with an arrow pointed right at it. Even though Zelda yells out begging them to stop fighting, Rivali releases the arrow, but Link is ready. With perfect timing, Link parries the arrow with his sword, saving his life and proving to Rivali that he still wouldn't have won the fight if Zelda hadn't intervened. 
I can't watch this cutscene without smiling no matter how many times I've watched it. This fight is something I've wanted to see since I first played Breath of the Wild and I love how well both the cutscene and soundtrack were brought to fruition. When do you think Link is the coolest? Do you agree or disagree with my rankings? Feel free to start discussions in the comments. If you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more Zelda content. Thank you so much for watching, Zelda out.